As clinicians, we know that all pain, no matter how it feels and no matter how long it's been present, is produced in the brain. We also know that in contrast to acute pain, which is usually driven by peripheral tissue injury or damage, with chronic non-cancer pain, the tissue has usually healed and the predominant events that contribute to the maintenance and experience of the pain occur in the central nervous system. There are multiple inputs to controlling the state of the central nervous system in a chronic pain patient. And these can include diet, lifestyle, genetic, uh, previous, ex previous life experience, exercise, and psychological factors, mood, and stress levels and sleep deprivation are all extremely important. So it's, it's, um, it's really a whole person approach that you need to take. So it's very, it's very easy to understand then um, the role of, of psychology in chronic pain management. It's a critical part of a multimodal approach because we've known for 30 years that the, the major um, risk factors or at least the major influences on the long-term outcome of chronic pain are psychosocial in nature and there are psychology treatments which can affect the brain and alter its function in ways that we just don't have medications or procedures to be able to do. So it, it, psychology is a critical part of multimodal treatment and, and it can include online pain management uh, programs. There are some very good online CBT programs or the local community support pain groups as well. It can be a challenging conversation to introduce the role of a pain psychologist uh, to a patient who has chronic non-cancer pain, particularly if they don't have a good understanding about um, where the pain is being produced and what modern pain management looks like. So motivational interviewing is another very helpful tool at uh, helping this challenging conversation to be brought to a positive outcome. Good pain management is about spending time with people and it's, it's about actually listening and it's about coming to that full socio-psycho-biomedical understanding of where the patient is in their journey and what's going to be important to them. And it's very common with pain management patients where we may just have to sit next to them and chat for six months, a year, and then the patient's life experience and their, their psychological readiness to change will, will one day just be there. And if you train yourself to listen for it and you know how to respond with motivational interviewing techniques when you hear the patient using that language, um, then that's, uh, you know, that's incredibly powerful and that's actually a key thing that pain management specialists do that uh, GPs often don't have the ability to do is just to spend a bit of time um, and you know an, an old mentor of mine used to say that every time you see a patient is an opportunity to educate them and it's a potentially therapeutic encounter for the patient so so you always have to try and leave these patients with a feeling that they have been listened to and supported even if you have not changed their medication even if you've not made any so-called progress what you may have done is laid another brick in the in the wall of um, you know the achievement that you will eventually get to hi how are you today i'm feeling terrible my pain is really bad Sorry to hear that. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about your pain? Um, I, I can't do much. Um, if I go for a walk, I walk a short distance and um, I get terrible pain in my back. And if I want to go for a drive to go out somewhere, I just can't because it mm. hurts to get behind the wheel. Oh gosh, it sounds like the pain is making you spend most of the time indoors. How does it feel not being able to get out of the house that much these days? Miserable. It, it really gets me down. Mm. So having the pain is bad on its own. And on top of that, it seems like it's starting to make you feel low as well. Is it okay for me to talk to you a little bit more about the pain and how you're feeling at the moment? Yes, I guess so. Okay, thank you. Well, the first thing I want to talk about is that pain is actually sensed by our brains. Are you saying that this pain's in my head? 
that I'm imagining it. I know that what I just said may sound like that, but no, that's definitely not what I'm saying at all. The pain you're feeling is absolutely real, but it's felt by your brain. So that happens because the nerves in your back take information about pain up to your brain. At the same time, your brain decides how much of that information about your back is a concern or a worry, and your mood actually plays a major role in that decision. Your brain tries to make sense of all of that physical as well as psychological information to produce the pain that you're actually feeling. I guess that makes sense to me. But so what? What does that mean for me? Well, do you mind if I ask, when you do feel down, what impact does that have on your pain? Well, it stops me from wanting to walk. It stops me from going for a drive. In fact, it just stops me from wanting to do anything and mm. I just feel so miserable. So that's a very common vicious cycle in people with pain. As you can see, your mood has an impact on your pain, but as does your physical health. So for example, the less you move, the worse your pain. I understand the vicious cycle, but I can't. I can't do anything about it. I wish I could, but I'm stuck. I, I just need to look after my back. Mm. I don't want it to get worse. Mm. It must be so frustrating to be stuck in that vicious cycle. So if it's okay with you, um, I would like to suggest a way you can get out of that vicious cycle without making your back worse. Can I do that? Yes, yes you can. And one way that can be very helpful is to work on that psychological information going up to your brain and impacting the pain in a negative way. And how does that work? So most people do this by going to see a psychologist who is experienced in pain management. The treatments a psychologist can provide include helping you to cope better with your pain by learning strategies to help you do the things you want to do, such as going for a walk without making your pain worse. So if you're feeling stressed about the pain and the impact it's having on your life, the psychologist can help you with that as well. Now that you mention it, I do get stressed about my pain as well as making me feel down. And you know what? That happens a lot to people who have experienced pain for as long as you have. Now, did you need some time to think about it or would you like me to arrange a referral to a psychologist today? Um, arrange a referral now. Okay, perfect. Well, look, let's discuss some psychologists in the area who have helped patients in similar situations to yourself achieve some good outcomes. Um, how does that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you.